who is Miss Titus too? Several months ago, I was privileged enough to be interviewed by some of my friends, Robert and Kenyatta of Keeping It In Context. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about Miss Titus 2 and why I started an Urban Apologetics YouTube channel, stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? I'm Robert. And I'm Kenyatta. And this is Keeping It In Context. And we have a very special guest today. We are so excited. We have today Miss Titus, Titus Two. Ba <laughs> Hey, what's up, Miss Titus? How you doing? I'm good. How are y'all doing? We're excellent. We're yes. excellent. And we, for those of you who don't know. Uh, we are huge fans of her because we actually met at the Frequency Conference in Philadelphia, didn't we? We did, we did. And did you have a good time? I had an awesome time. There was so many people there and so many things to learn. I, it was great. Right. And we were sitting at the table reserved for the scholars <laughs> and um, <laughs> eating this buffet. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of was looking uh, to see who allowed me to sit you know, <laughs> of, the, of the great thinkers. And, you know, she was like, you can sit over here, you know. <laughs> In my mind, that's what it was. She actually was looking up, you know, like looking down, wasn't paying no attention. But anyway, we sat over there with her, my mm -hmm. wife and I, and uh, we had a great time. Yes. This is a wonderful woman of God. She is. A genuine heart, genuine spirit. What you see right now is this is how she is in person. Just you can feel the genuineness in her. And so, yes. And as soon as we got through conversating and talking, I told my wife, we, I want to build a relationship with her, you mm -hmm. know, and we, especially when we found out you was doing YouTube. And so mm -hmm. we were like, we need to keep in contact with her. Because that's mm -hmm. that, whatever it is that's what makes people stand out and special, she got it. That's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you. You know, um, you know, who are you? So, so our audience and keep it in context would know who you are. All right. Well, of course, my YouTube name is Miss Titus Two. I'm a student in apologetics. I can't even say I'm an apologist yet. I don't think I've quite earned that crown or that title yet, but. I'm a Christian. I've been saved my whole life. Grew up in the church. I love reading the Bible. I love learning more about God. So I want to see my generation and of course generations younger than me come to the Lord because right now there's just so many other things out there that's kind of pulling people away from the church and making people think that the Bible and the church and Christianity are something that they're not. So I don't know. I just have a passion for the gospel. I have a passion for my generation and I don't know, I'm just doing my thing out here, trying to learn just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and, and in that vein, you know, you, you know, as you talk about what you kinda, you know, you want people to learn the Bible, you want them to have a relationship with the Lord, is, you know, so why did you decide to uh, do a biblical-based YouTube show? Well, because I've been in a few Facebook conversations, <laughs> chat, debate, <laughs> arguments, and I just get so tired of hearing people say things that just are not true mm -hmm. about the body of Christ, about the Bible, about God. It's just so frustrating because I know that there's an eternity and I know that there's people out there who don't know what's coming. And I feel like, well, because scripture tells us it's our job to warn people of the wrath to come. Like, I don't want to just sit on what I know because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And especially over you know, you just hearing somebody on TV or on the radio or on the Breakfast Club or something like that hear right. something, yeah. and you know, it, it completely turns you away from God over something that wasn't even true. That bothers me. Those things bother me. So I was like, you know, the conversations that I hear that nobody really seems to be speaking up from my perspective, or there's very few, I want it to be that voice. And like, because I'm a Christian, of course, I'm going to look at Christian YouTube channels. Yeah. But I have friends and colleagues who are never going to look up apologetics on YouTube. They're not going to search, you know, evidence for the resurrection. They're just not going to do that. Right. So I said, you know, if, if I have something that's pressing on me, I can talk about it. And even if it just reaches my small circle, at least it got to somebody. You know, and, and that was how we approached it. But honestly, I feel that we can do our best work on the streets. 
Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. because, you know, the, the, the pool pit is really kind of guarded right now. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and some of the things, some of our frustrations, and you can tell us too, you know, what you feel about it. But for me, it's like there are things that I want to talk about that I'll never be able to talk about from the pool pit. Right. right. Limitations. Right, right, yeah. right. right. Have you experienced that same thing? I have. I was just talking to somebody about that today. Like <laughs> when I go to church, there's really only like three sermons you're going to hear overall in church. You're going to hear, you need to live holy. Yeah. You need to be saved. Yeah. Now I can't remember what the third one was. I know, I know. But it's Girl, like, the one Sunday morning. <laughs> he got up. <laughs> That's it. You know, and a lot of times it's not even the gospel. It's like, okay, at least you should hear the gospel at church. Now, oh, the third one is you You need to be blessed. God wants yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 like, yes. To an extent, I believe all of those things are true. Right. Yes. But there's so much in that Bible that people are not discussing and those are important things yeah so, so as a uh christian apologist are you just being a female are you getting any pushback i am especially from a particular group um but we'll <laughs> talk about that group later <laughs> <laughs> you know women shouldn't shouldn't really have too much to say when it comes to the bible or spiritual things you just need to shut up and, and listen to the man folk and i'm like but what if those man folk are wrong that's right. <laughs> yeah. so, here I am. Well, here yeah. you are, you know, and so, and being in a, I, I come from a context where women could, they could do the children's mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, they can serve, uh, you know, in the kitchen and prepare the food and they can do the announcements. Welcome. But mm -hmm. but in terms of being a source of, of intellectual, spiritual knowledge, uh, uh, I was brought up in a context where that was like a no-no. Right. Uh, and so my mission today is to to continue Jesus' mission in the liberation mm -hmm. of all people, you know, ex mm -hmm. especially women. Because, you know, you I listened to the things that you put out there, and we're going to go ahead and get into it because you had a run-in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to let you say it in your own way. But, but uh, you had a video called I Am a, a Hebrew Israelite, a mm -hmm. Black Christian Female Perspective. So I wanted to know, you know, what happened? Why did you want... <laughs> to do a video like that. Wouldn't you want to know that, sweetie? I agree, and we'll have a link to that video. <laughs> there are a couple answers to that question. Uh, one of those being from the, the conference that we went to in Philly. Uh -huh. So um, I had met Vocab before, but he was there, one of his other friends was there that kind of, you know, is affiliated with the street apologist. Now, for those people who don't know, now, who is Vocab? Okay, Vocab Malone is like the it person when it comes to apologetics specifically aimed at Hebrew right. Israelism. Right. Yeah. So he And my friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> there, no problem. So he is there and he's like, You guys, I'm gonna go live on my channel. Would y'all wanna do it? And I was like, I don't know. Like I had done a few small, short little videos that nobody was watching, but you know, I'm still getting my feet wet or whatever. But I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll do it. So we get on there and one of the first comments that popped up directed at me was, hey sis, you know you're a Hebrew Israelite, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no I'm not. Which the only reason that I really started getting into that, um, was trying to study Hebrew Israelite doctrines is because I had a friend who I used to go to church with. Mm. And we would debate on it because that person was converted to that, that doctrine. And so um, they approached me one so, day. They're so like, "I got." Hmm. He was a Christian. He says he was a Christian. He, he says was he was a Christian-ish. Correct. And, and he and he ran into them, spoke, uh, talked mm -hmm. to them about uh, you know what they talk about, and he he converted he over to that. Converted over. Well, I think it started. Okay, he he grew up church. A lot of people grew up church and say I used to be a Christian. I think he yes. grew up church. And so um, it went from that to probably falling away from church. Then he got wrapped up into Kemet, Kemeticism, however you say it. And then he went from Kemet to Hebrew Israelism. So as of right now, last time I checked, he's, he's still parked there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But um, he's like, I got some questions for you regarding the Bible. So we start talking 
And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I will say, I'll say this, talking to someone who doesn't believe the same things as you, it grows you up. Cause I realized like, man, a lot of the things that I thought that I knew, I really didn't know. Wow. I really didn't know. I'm not saying that the Hebrew Israelites are right. I mean, there are certain things that we can agree on, but there's a, a lot of things that we're just not gonna agree on because they're not biblical. Yeah. So it was a mixture of those things. So linking up with vocab and beta and then already kind of being familiar with their doctrine. I was like, man, that's that's a great topic. And I remember one day I was in the word, I was reading Romans nine mm. and Paul talking about how, you know, all those who are born of Israel are not Israel. And like, I already knew this, but it was like reading that was like the first time I had ever read it. Wow. And then the next thing I know was like, God was giving me the, the scenes and and the script for this video so i'm like writing at three o'clock in the morning like oh i gotta put this video here i gotta put that there like so i don't know i just felt so inspired and i put it all in a mashup video which now looking back on it i'm like wow the, the quality was video. terrible but no i had no. a lot of fun making it so that's where that the inspiration came from talking about and we're gonna put a link uh up here uh, <laughs> video yeah. and and it was lively it was it was you being you thank you for watching part one of that interview now if you want to catch part two and three Hop on over to Robert and Kenyatta's YouTube channel. Keep it in in context and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Shalom, grace and peace.